It's standard issue for today's firefighters. The self-contained breathing apparatus reduces risk and saves lives. A century ago, firemen had no such protection. Until an Ohio entrepreneur got creative, then braved the inferno himself. In 1912, pretty much everyone in Cleveland has heard of Garrett Morgan. A high-powered businessman, well-connected and well-respected. As the son of former slaves, Morgan has risen to heights that most African-Americans of the day can only dream of. I consider Garrett Morgan to be the African-American entrepreneur of the early 20th century. He was the first African-American to own an automobile in Cleveland, which automatically puts him in a very elevated category. Garrett Morgan is also mechanically brilliant. As a teenager, he worked in a textile plant and showed a special knack for fixing machines. By the time he's in his early 30s, Morgan's running his own clothing factory. Today, he's struck by a tragic story in the paper. 146 people have died in a burning garment factory. It's something that happens all too often. Shop floors are crowded and cluttered fire traps. And even if rescuers can get into a burning building, they don't have any equipment to help them breathe. Morgan's inventor brain shifts into gear. He imagines a scenario where firefighters could enter a raging blaze wearing a breathing device that gives them time to rescue victims. There's a possibility to revolutionize the way in which firefighting is performed. Morgan starts experimenting with fire to figure out how to beat its deadly effects. The smoke contains toxic gases and particles. If that doesn't kill you, the heat probably will. Lung tissue literally starts to vaporize at 150 degrees Celsius. He needs a source of air that's cleaner and cooler. And he finds it down near the floor. Even if it's not entirely clean, the air down here is breathable and cooler. Um, so probably he thought that, well, if he could get his device down to the level of where the air was cleaner, you would have a stronger opportunity to breathe. Good afternoon, Frank. Good afternoon, Gary. This inspires Morgan to come up with an ingenious but simple concept. Using the tools of his own trade, he gets to work with some help from his brother. Do is make sure that you line along the seam here so it's mm -hmm. nice and even. Okay. And then you stitch your way through. They sew an airtight canvas hood with tiny stitches to keep out the smoke. Transparent eyepieces are made of a heat-resistant material called mica. And the key to making it all work, two hoses that will serve as breathing tubes. The longer hose reaches almost to the ground. When the fireman inhales, Air passes through a water-soaked sponge that filters out soot and smoke. The breath is exhaled through the shorter second tube, which runs from the mouth to the top of the hood. A ball valve allows air to escape, but prevents smoke from entering the hood. Morgan calls his invention the safety hood. He figures it can provide at least 15 life-saving minutes for a firefighter. A device so simple, anyone can use it. And so inexpensive, any fire department can afford it. He understood that every little town has a fire department, and if he could sell one device to every fire department or police department, he would probably have a very strong business going ahead. Morgan runs ads and demonstrates his invention to fire departments across the country. But Morgan's big chance happens close to home. 
and not in the kind of fire he'd planned for. It's July, 1916, and the city of Cleveland is building a tunnel under Lake Erie. One night, workers accidentally strike a pocket of gas that triggers an explosion. When rescuers try to enter the tunnel, they're overcome by fumes, smoke, and heat. And finally, one individual says, well, we, I know about this safety hood device thing that I've heard about, and the inventor lives in town, so let's give him a call. Hello, Garrett Morgan speaking. Come, come. Morgan arrives at the disaster site with his invention in hand, but nobody dares to be the first to try it. The only way to prove that his device works is to head into the gassy inferno himself. He descends 60 meters into a subterranean hell. Anybody here? His lifeline, a piece of technology that's never been tested in an environment as dangerous as this. You're descending underneath Lake Erie and going through a very a series of locks to open doors and gates to let the methane or the gas out and to find these individuals. Morgan's invention seems to be working. He's breathing in less toxic air from near the tunnel floor. He finds the first survivor. Anybody? Anybody can help me here? When he arrives above ground carrying the injured worker, the crowd can't believe it. Morgan was able to save two people individually and then it's believed that fire officials donned two more helmets were able to bring out two more individuals alive. News of Morgan's bravery and his miraculous new device spreads quickly. More than 500 cities buy his safety hood for their fire departments. Morgan wins a gold medal of bravery from the citizens of Cleveland for his heroics in the tunnel and his safety hood helps revolutionize firefighting technology. Other inventions of the decade. 1911, the electric ignition brings engines to life with the flick of a key and makes hand cranks obsolete. And 1915, lipstick in a tube changes the face of generations and launches the concept of touch-up on the go. Coming up, a determined mechanic wrestles toast out of the dark ages and launches the era of the pop-up. 